Welcome back. This is part three, and we're going to be looking at how to use the least amount of material when building a can of a certain volume. And this will be done implicitly instead of explicitly, although you could do it that way too. But when we do it this implicit way, we, we find out that we have some interesting characteristics that the implicit differentiation does for us. And, and that's the most interesting thing about this particular way of doing it. Now when you make a can, of course, you've seen all sorts of shapes and sizes. Um, they're always cylinders, of course, and that means something, but I mean, a Coke can doesn't look like a tuna can. So we just want to find out what are the optimal uh, dimensions and relationships between those dimensions that allow us to use as little material as possible and still enclose the volume that we're looking for. So let's go ahead and look at the idea. Pretty simple. Uh, we want a, a volume and we also want a surface area. And we'll see later that the R and H will have a relationship in between them. So when we do this, we're going to isolate these. I'll put them up to the left and we'll start implicitly taking the derivative for each one. And then we'll just keep track of everything and I'll make little comments as we go. But right now it's basically the same thing that we did in part one and part two. We will be taking the derivative as a function of R uh, for both these equations here. And then we'll, we'll see what kind of relationship we can find with them. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, 100 is a, a constant, that's something to note, and therefore the derivative on the right side will just be 0. Uh, and in here you can see that sure pi is a constant, but uh, we have a multiplication of, of two things there. So we'll have to take care of that and the chain rule for the implicit differentiation. So that's, that's what we're doing here. And then we look at the uh, surface area, okay, and when we take the derivative of the surface area, we want a minimum surface area, and therefore, because it's a minimum, it will be a zero value there. Just like a max, a min, or a terrace point, the derivative there is, is flat, it's zero, all right. So let's, let's just clean this up then. Uh, we want the minimum for the derivative of s, the surface area, and we see that we have both sides, both equations here, 4 and 6, are going to be equal to 0, and we're going to use that to our advantage uh, in, in just a few steps here. Let's take 4 and 6, and if, if this goes a little fast, just push pause or uh, rewind it or something. I know it, it can be a little intimidating seeing so many letters and not very many numbers. So just hold your breath and <laughs> you'll get through it. Um, here, I just moved the zero to the other side because I, I want to clean up with algebra and we don't have all that much room. So that's all I did with four and six. But we're going to find the relationship now between h and r. So we'll factor uh, pi r out of uh, four and two pi from six. So just see what happens there. Now, I'll go back again. First, we have our equation, but because it's equal to zero, it's real easy to get rid of the things that we don't want. It's just a neat little algebra trick that you learned a million years ago. So clean it up and solve for dh dr. And when we do that, we can use that relationship down there and replace it. And then once it's replaced, we can clean it up and we get that. Now that is interesting. We'll take the two things in the red boxes. Let's clean everything else away so we can look at just those two. And now we have something very interesting. This means something. It means when you have a can, 2R, of course, is the diameter. The diameter for the can with the maximization utility for using as little uh, substance as possible to have the least surface area is the same as its height, the diameter should be the same as its height. And let's go ahead and get our particular can, the one that has the volume 100 milliliters, and we'll, we'll use what we know between these two, and we'll get the actual number for it. You see this 
2 times the third root of pi divided, uh, 50 divided by pi will be the actual height and also the diameter. Uh, but that's actually less interesting than this. But let's, let's take a look at that. We have this here, the diameter, okay, that one, and the height are the same. I find that much more interesting and useful than any particular number like we have. Okay, in this case, that would give us the actual, <laughs> get out your ruler and, okay, it's this long. Uh, I find the relationship between R and H much more interesting. And because it is an implicit differentiation, these relationships come out of it. And I think that's really interesting. And it's much, sometimes, much more useful than the explicit differentiation where you would still, if you were trying to maximize or minimize something, you would still end up with the relationships, but in a different way. You'd get to the goal in a, you would have taken a different path mathematically, but you could still get there. So when we maximize or minimize a certain quantity like we were doing with the can, and it's a function of two variables like we had, okay, we had our R and our H, and they were connected through an equation like we had here, you can find the relationship between the variables through implicit differentiation. And once you have that, then of course it becomes trivial algebra to find the actual numerical dimension. But the relationship is the interesting thing that falls out of doing it this way. Hope that helps. See you next time.